right, welcome to our second uh, tutorial slash demonstration on custom IP in the NIOS 2 processor. Um, we're going to make this one a little bit shorter than the last set of videos. We did uh, development of the custom IP in part one, and then we actually used it in part two. I've already pre-developed this IP. We'll kind of show you what it does, and then we'll just use it in our part uh, in this video. So without further um, explanation, let's just get right into it. We're going to bring up Cordis, and I'm going to do a new project wizard. All right, now we can go through. We're going to throw this on our D drive in our video demo, and then NIOS custom IP2. You can see I've already got a custom IP folder in here where I've created that, the rest of that custom IP. Um, and we'll just call this all the same name. Empty projects. We are the 5CSX FC6 D6 F31 C6. Chip for the D10 standard. And I don't need to, but I'll go ahead and specify Questa. I'm going to hit finish there. All right, now that our... Uh, projects are created we can go ahead and fire up platform designer and here's platform designer we'll go ahead and maximize that window and the first thing we obviously need is that nios processor so we will grab that nios processor and we will just take the defaults the slash f version we need some on-chip memory so we'll grab that, and I want a little bit more than 4K, so I'm just going to add a zero to the end and give us 40K. And we need a JTAG UART. We will grab that, and that one we're pretty much just leaving the base system. So there we go. That is um, our basics of what we're doing. Now, before we create our custom component, let's just take a second to look at our custom IP. So here's our custom IP. We're bringing in some address bits, the chip select, the clock, the read, the reset not, uh, the write, the write data, and our output of the read data. We're creating three 32-bit regi registers to hold some values within our register. And then on the pause edge of the clock or the neg edge of the reset, if we get a reset, we're going to set all of those back to zero. Otherwise, if we get a chip select and a write, then we're going to do a case on our address. We're writing to multiple registers this time, right? So zero, one, or two is going to be which register we're writing to. And based on that case statement, we're going to write the, whatever the write data was into reg one, reg two, or reg three. And our read is the same, chip select a read, and then we'll do a case on the address, and our read data gets reg one, two, or three. Otherwise, the regs get the regs, and read data goes back to a zero. That's basically our module, so we're just creating three 32-bit registers to hold values. It's kind of a um, silly little exercise, but it demonstrates multiple registers really, really well. So, Let's move on and actually create our custom component. So we do that by clicking on the new component up here in the corner. That will bring up the component editor. Um, we got to give it a name. I'm just going to call it my reg, um, my register. I give it a group, Oregon Tech, and maybe we want this in modules subfolder. Just showing you how you can do some different things here. Um, description, um, custom IP register for NIOS 2. I wrote it. And let's go grab our synthesis file. So we can just hit the add file. We're going to go into that custom IP folder that I've already done and tested and simulated. Um, did that off video. And I just showed you the source code for that. So we'll go ahead and analyze our file. 
There we go. The only other thing we, we can double check, here's all of our signals. There's our slave coming in, our clock and our reset. Uh, we can go look at our um, signals. Um, we really don't have anything um, to export this time, so we don't need a conduit. But there's our reset is reset, our clock is clock, and all of our signals got recognized correctly. So the only things I really got to do is associate my clock with the clock and the reset with the reset section that we created. And we're pretty well good to go. I can go ahead and hit finish here and say yes, save my design. And then under our project, we'll now see that Oregon Tech and our modules. And there's my register, which I can double click on. Um, one thing I forgot, it doesn't like, uh, necessarily like uh, names in certain things. So I'm going to edit this. And I'm just going to say my register. Yes, I want to save it. Yes, save those changes to that. All right, so our system's been saved and there's my register. Now I should be able to double click on that. And when we hit finish, it's gonna prop it in. There we go. So we can go ahead and wire this thing up. So like always, our debug request, uh, reset request is gonna come up here to our clock. And then we're gonna wire our clock and our reset to all of our devices. So we'll go ahead and do that like we always do. Okay, our on-chip memory is going to get both instruction and data, uh, or sorry, data and instruction. The rest just get the data. And then, of course, our um, JTAG UART also needs its interrupt wired. And then let's just go ahead and rename these. We'll name that NIAS Custom IP2. We'll name this SRAM. We'll name this Debug. And, oh, it did bring in two of those. I can get rid of one of those. Um, so let's just get rid of that second one. And we'll just call this um, my bridge. Sounds good. All right, so let's assign our base addresses and let's assign our vectors. Uh, we can go ahead and do a save. And now that we're saved, we can just generate our HDL. All right, we are generated. I can go ahead and hit finish, and Cordis will tell us that we've got new IP we should bring in. So we will go bring in our IP. That should be in our NIOS custom IP2 synthesis folder, and that is that quip file right there. So we'll bring that in, and we will hit the quick compile so we can assign our clock pin. All right, our quick compile is done, our analysis and elaboration, no errors. So now we can go over to our assignments, hit our pin planner, and we can assign our clock, which is on AF14. That's the only pin we've got, so that's all we got to worry about. And we'll go ahead and hit that full compile. So while that's happening, we, of course, like always, we can go start work on our software. So we'll start up NIOS, uh, Eclipse for NIOS. And of course, we'll change where we're at. So we'll go to the D drive, um, video demo, NIOS custom IP2. We'll make a new folder in here called software. And that's where we want to put everything. All right, our NIOS, our Eclipse tools for NIOS is up. We can go ahead and just maximize that. And we will create our new NIOS2 application and board support package. 
First thing we got to do is go grab our SOPC info file. Um, we want uh, drive D, video demos, custom IP2, we want that. Okay, and we know we renamed our NIOS processor, so we know we've got the right one. I'm just going to name this NIOS Custom IP2. We want Hello World Small, and our default location for everything is fine, and our board support defaults are fine, so I'm just going to hit Finish. Okay, our projects are created. Like always, I'm just going to do a uh, build to make sure everything builds okay on the Scratch project. Okay. Uh, looks like everything built fine. We're going to need to modify some files. So let's take our Hello World small. And we're also going to need to open up our system.h. Um, we'll also need some stuff from io.h, um, if you recall the last video. But we don't need to actually open it. I, yeah, we just need the couple macro definitions that are in that. I'm just going to do a control A and a delete because we're going to rewrite all this from scratch. Um, first things first, let's bring in standard io.h. Since we gave ourselves 40k, we have room for it. And of course, we need that system.h. And we need io.h. So those are the three header files that we need. And then, of course, we need an int main. And our main should return a zero, even though we'll never get there because we're going to do a while one. So there we go. Now let's start with just our standard um, printf. Um, welcome to custom IP demo two. And then um, we want to write values into all three of those registers we created. So we're going to use the generic IO write um, macro to do that. And if you remember right, it has three parameters in that IO write macro. Uh, we can see that. We can right click and say open the declaration. And that should open up our IO.h, which is not wanting to do. I went and did it manually. So here's our IO write. It takes our base address, the register number we're talking to, and then the data we are writing. So we can get our base address by going to our system.h and going down to the um, uh, my reg and grab the my reg base. So that's our first piece. The next was the register we're going to talk to. So the first register was register zero. And let's just put in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's just write A's to that first register. Then we're going to do an IO write to the base and we're going to write to the second register and we'll do a zero X, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We'll write FF. And then an IO write to my reg, and we'll write to that third register, and we'll write beef and beef just because we can. Um, whoop, we need a zero X in front of that. All right, so there we go. We've written to all three of our registers. Um, now let's prove what we did. So let's print F. Um, custom reg one zero x percent x, and we're going to do an IO read. And remember, that just takes the base address and the register we're reading from. So, there we go. And I'm just going to copy that a couple of times, and we'll change this to a, a one and this to a two. And we'll change this to a two and this a three. And there we go. Let's do one more thing. Let's rewrite the middle one just for fun. And let's make it FFFF. -F -F -F. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll reread back all three registers. So that's our program that we're going to write. It's fairly simple. We'll go ahead and hit save on this, and then we will rebuild our project. Okay, now we can go back and check to see if Quartus has finished up. And it has. So the first thing we can do, we didn't do this in the last video, but we can go into our RTL viewer and we can look at some things there. So here's our RTL viewer of our NIOS 2 processor. And if we zoom in on this section over here, we're going to see our custom IP. If I open that up and we zoom in a little bit more, there's our stack of our three registers. And then based on some stuff, some muxes, we're going to get our stuff out. And there's our read data line output going out. So there we go. That's our custom IP. Um, we can close that down and we can go ahead and program our chip. So let's hit the programmer. And we want to just do a quick save and an auto detect and that chip. And yes, we do. And there we go. Click there. Do one more save and we can go ahead and program our board. So there's our board. Um, we can hit our start. And we can see that the board is indeed programming. And there we go. Everything's blank because we didn't assign any pins. So we're good there. Let's go back to our NIOS. And we are now compiled. So we should be ready to go ahead and run this. So let's do a run as run configuration and we'll go to NIOS 2 hardware and we'll do a new run configuration so here we go we'll give it a name um, NIOS custom IP2 uh, we'll go to our target connections and we'll hit refresh now that we're programmed it's there I can hit apply and then I can go ahead and hit that run button as soon as it's applied all right, we're launching the NIOS console now. Um, we're about 64% of the way through here, so we should see it download the software here in a second. There it goes, and we'll switch over. And, of course, I forgot to put slash ins in, um, but there we go, right? Welcome to our custom IP demo 2. Custom reg 1 was A's, reg 2 was 5's, and reg 3 was beef and beef. And after the rewrite, Reg 1 was still A's, Reg 2 became all F's, and Reg 3 became beef and beef. So there we go. We are good there. I could fix this by adding in some slash ins. Um, that will clean up our display. But that will conclude our custom IP2 uh, demonstration slash tutorial.